The Catholic Church is in crisis over sexual abuse. With deep regret, we acknowledge that a number of people associated with the church have betrayed the trust placed in them by sexual abuse of minors and adults. Victims say the bishop's regret is not enough. I'd have to say that I'd regard that, that statement as a cynical public relations exercise. After decades of inaction, the church faces its day of reckoning. This is really Armageddon for the church. And a legal and financial showdown. It could be easily tens of millions of dollars, couldn't it? Some of that could be. Tonight on Four Corners, the church awaits Judgment Day after a cover-up that has left victims twice betrayed. Hello and welcome to a special Victorian edition of Four Corners. I'm Sally Neighbour. Tonight, a program that was broadcast around Australia two months ago, but stopped in Victoria due to legal action by the Catholic Church. Twice Betrayed reveals the strategy of cover-up by church leaders over the scandal of sexual abuse. The injunction against Four Corners has now been lifted after the sentencing of two Christian brothers convicted this month of sexually assaulting children in the Victorian town of Ballarat, where our story begins. shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. As Australians gathered in remembrance last month, a community struggled to forget a more recent trauma. In Ballarat, Victoria, the Catholic Church is at the centre of community life. But what's happened here is enough to shatter anyone's faith. And this could be any town in Australia, because the same betrayal has happened over and over again. To have to beg for help hurts. For a man to say that, hey, I need help dealing with this, with the feelings that I have, the rage and the anger that I have. And your priest was responsible and you shifted him around and, and you're denying that the church is responsible. God, that just blows your mind. At the age of 14, Stephen Woods was raped by a local priest Dozens of children throughout the Ballarat Diocese were sexually abused by the same man. The profound failure of church leaders in their response to this case and many others like it has left among their followers a deep alienation and mistrust. Of course inside there's so much turmoil, there's so much anger, you just want to scream out and say, bloody hell no, I was a kid. Can't you understand that it's, as a kid you just don't, and growing up in a Catholic system, it's so repressive, and you were taught to trust. Stephen's story is a familiar one to the support group Broken Rights. They have not once approached my family. Since setting up four years ago, it's received more than a thousand reports of sexual abuse by clergy Australia wide. Nine out of ten complaints are against the Catholic Church. Broken Rights says that in Victoria, 15% of Catholic clergy are the subject of current complaints. The group's founder, former theology student Chris Wilding, sees a distressing pattern in the church's response. The church has been handling this, these cases in-house for, for decades. They've had ample opportunity to do the right thing by the victims and they've proven that they, they have no intention of changing the way that they handle them they've proven that they would betray the people's trust time and time and again in order to save their own skins. What happened at Ballarat is proof of the worst failings in the church's handling of sexual abuse. Over a period of more than 20 years, 
Father Gerald Ridsdale sexually assaulted as many as 200 children and his superiors did nothing to stop him. I know that's the complaint. Uh, I have stated a couple of times to the people of the diocese that it's simply not true to say that uh, I knew these things were happening and did nothing about them. How were parents received when they went and complained to Bishop Mulcoons? Um, the parents were very upset at their reception. Um, I've only spoke, there were two sets of parents that went together. I've only ever spoken with one of those. And um, the, the mother said that she felt that she was a criminal. There was, he sat there in a sort of a cold, stony silence and uh, it wasn't warm or compassionate in any way to the, what they were saying to him. The complaints to Bishop Mulcairns about Father Ridsdale started in 1975 when police informed him of reports from parents that their boys had been molested by the priest. The families didn't want to press charges, so the bishop said he would deal with it. He then transferred Ridsdale to another parish where the abuses continued. The first time I received a complaint about Father Ridsdale, uh, I immediately took him out of the parish he was in, uh, put him under counselling and indicated that he would not be given another appointment until the counsellor uh, said that that was uh, an appropriate or responsible thing to do. But Bishop Mulcairn's version of events is discredited in an internal police report that's not been published before. Codenamed Operation Arcadia, it was a six-month investigation of the bishop and whether he was criminally culpable for Ridsdale's crimes. Contrary to what the bishop says, the police were unable to locate any evidence that Ridsdale attended any formal counselling. The main finding was that Mulkerns was aware of Ridsdale's crimes and that he had knowledge of the offences much earlier than he suggests. In 1994, two decades after the first report to the bishop, Father Ridsdale was convicted and jailed for 18 years. The judge was damning of both Ridsdale and the church. In seeking to sate your perverted lust, it seems no victim was too frail or vulnerable. Your acts of debauchery were wicked and appalling. The victims were not given, in my view, any priority by your superiors in the Catholic Church aware of your conduct. The image and reputation of the Church was given first priority. Despite the critical police findings, Bishop Mulkerns has not been charged. In effect, he got off on a technicality. The crimes the bishop knew of, like indecent assault and gross indecency, are classified as misdemeanours rather than felonies. And concealing knowledge of a misdemeanour is not a criminal offence. Bishop, the police didn't find proof that you were criminally culpable. Do you find now that you were at the least morally culpable? I don't because I believed I acted with my conscience. Uh, and you're morally culpable if you go against that. What view do you take of Father Ridsdale now? Well, I take the view of a man who's uh, been tragically flawed uh, and uh, is uh, paying the price for that and he's in jail till he's 75. Tragically flawed? Hmm. And will he be shunned or forgiven? Well, I would hope we can forgive anybody for anything. The bishop's handling of the Ridsdale case would be bad enough if it were unique, but evidence compiled in a wide-ranging parliamentary study suggests it was typical of the church's response. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Do you believe there's been a cover-up by the church? Well, I'm certain there's been a cover-up by the church. Uh, in those issues and it would be an ongoing thing. Uh, it's not just something that's occurred in the past, I believe it would be occurring even now.